Ah, shit. This episode of the BRG Podcast has been brought to you by our patrons. Here at BRG, we'd like to thank those patrons who have subscribed and donated. It is because of generosity like yours that makes this show possible. On this episode of the podcast, me and Kira get back together again to bring you another wonderful week of gaming news and other news topics, as well as a topic of what the fuck, YouTube? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the BRG Podcast. This is where we do all the fun stuff related to gaming news, gaming topics, and other little news bites down there as well, of course. I'm your host, Warp Jester, and as always, to my left, still cold with cold hands. <laughs> it, yeah, I was I was doing this. Uh, this is Kirok. Hi, guys. I was just like... <laughs> How's it going, Kirok? <laughs> going great, going great. Gotta get the fireplace going. Yeah, you know, I, I I got the fireplace going up in the house, but uh, oh, I'm nice. not in the house, so okay. <laughs> I've got like three layers on my legs right now. I've got my my long underwear, my jammies, and my jeans. Oh so. man! <laughs> hey, it's life. It's winter, guys, so it's gonna happen. Anyways, we have got a great bunch of news, and it's wonderful because this week is actually just about news. news. We don't have yes. these big events like CES or end of year or anything else going on, so we can actually talk about stuff. That's actually happening in current times we want to talk about. Um, so that feels kind of good. And actually, in addition to all the regular news we've got, there's there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, stop me if you've heard this before, but YouTube is having troubles with the whole managing their media and, and people yeah. and things. And yeah. there's there's another, another big, well, a couple of things that have popped recently regarding that. So in light of this, we're going to go ahead and cover kind of the, the, the state of new media and talk about where we think it may be going. So we'll hit, cover that in the second half. So yeah. without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, boys and girls, let's go ahead and get into the news this week. Starting off the news, I think this is a pretty relevant one. Um, Games suck, and it's actually all your fault. <laughs> Yes, me? Uh, You're pointing to me? Uh, yeah, absolutely you. Oh, God. You're a fucking Canadian. I know it's what your a... fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> in, a, in an interview, um, it was actually a conversation that was had with uh, Insomniac Games Chief Brand Officer Ryan Sh uh, Shrine Schrader? Sh Schneider? Schneider. Uh, uh, okay. Who shares some candid, candid thoughts on games and where things are. And, and this is in reference to, like... Kind of like where single player games have been gotten into, but we'll get into that in a minute. But just in general, the biggest issue he talked about was the fact that um, they have a problem with listening to their best judgment and not listening to the vocal minority of people. So vocal minority will sort of beat on their heads about they want this feature, they want this function, etc. Yeah. in the game. And they end up listening and adding that and ends up destroying the game as a result of it. So, long story short, um, they need to kind of pull the reins back a little bit. And while they still do want to take information feedback from the community, yeah. there's a real, real issue with what he calls a doubt monster, but a real issue with listening to that vocal minority and not thinking for yourself and really adhering to what you want to have done with the game. So, gotcha. I, I, I get where he's coming from. It, it felt a little bit, left a kind of bad taste in my mouth. But I, after reading the article, I, I understood a little better, and I feel a little better about it. What he was saying, okay. So. Well, so speaking of interviews, there's another one, uh, actually reported by Polygon. Uh, streamers and Let's Players are killing single-player games. So it is my fault. Yes. <laughs> no, uh, it, it very much is your fault. <laughs> an interview with Amy Henning on Polygon. They basically talked about the death of single-player linear games. Uh, the interview, uh, In their interview, some of the things that Henning brought up were about the rising cost of game development, yet this seemingly hard cap point where games are no, most games don't go above that sixty dollar price tag. So their games are costing more, but they're not making as much as they did. Adding to that, Henning also cites that um, people aren't necessarily buying games anymore; they're simply watching Let's Plays online as well as 
uh, streamers playing the game. Mm -hmm. So I read a little bit of the article, not a whole lot, but when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm not completely in agreement because I've watched people playing games. I'm not either. And and I'm going, hey, I bought that game because I watched this guy stream it. You know how many times I've had people tell me that? They watched me stream and they went out and bought a game? See, here's the thing. Now, to be fair... Yeah. This was somewhat of a, a, a note aside to the main conversation about it. The big points to, to, to keep in mind here, so that before everybody goes flaming all over the place, is yeah. games have <clears throat> originally stuck to a $60 price point and never changed, even though the cost of things goes up. Goes up. It's fact the, of matter. New we know motion life. capture, yeah. new so, high-res cameras and things like that, yeah. That's a big factor. But to say that streamers are also a factor in there, I don't agree. I understand where she's coming from. I understand that she's trying to cite, but there's no proof behind it. And I think I think it's kind of right. BS because on one side of things, you have Kirok, who, like you said, has watched stream and gone, fuck this, I'm buying this, it's worth it. Yep. Yep. On the other end of things, you have people like me that are going to watch people play these games and feel satisfied enough watching people play this game. And to be fair, there is no way in fuck off hell I'm going to bother buying these games, regardless of watching them or not. Right. I'm okay. not going to play them. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to buy them. I'm just. I'm not. But it, you just want to know what it's about. Oh, or Fallout see what Four. It is. Yeah. I love Fallout Four. It's a fantastic yeah. game. It's so versatile. It's beautiful. It's fun. Look at all the things the weirdest does with it. No different kind yeah, of does it does. That's true. It's fantastic. Will I buy it? No, absolutely not. Gotcha. I will never experience that personally. So living vicariously through him is worth it to me. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Just, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> So, Eddie. is is the next thing something you'd buy? <laughs> no, 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 and no. Um. <laughs> okay, so Nintendo's announced the Nintendo Labo 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 Labo. Um, it, it it's kind of a okay. What it is 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 a is a, is a cardboard cutout thing that you can <laughs> buy, and it makes different things for it it's so cool so you, you, you see the picture here as an example and make a little vibrating bug bot if you've if you ever made bug bots before you get a little vibrator like out of a cell phone or a pager yeah kids ask your parents about what pagers are um <laughs> and you, 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 you tape it to the back of a toothbrush head with a little battery and it vibrates and runs all over the place um there's other things you can do you can make a little piano out of it but basically it boils down to it's all cardboard so you buy these cardboard kits, and then you can build things out of them. Now, they come from the most simple things, a small kit that makes multiple things. And that's yeah. like a little thing that you can do like the little little cardboard bug, yeah. bug from and other things. That's $70. Yeah, it's not that, cheap. That's, that's $70. Well, Se- people might. That, $70. The, 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 seven the, zero for card. Kirok, Kir- Kir- it's US. 70 fucking dollars. For cardboard, no, but you're getting the game too, because it interacts with your with your switch. And as you do certain things with the cardboard thing that you build, it plays in the game as well. It's really fair cool. enough. Fair enough. Yeah, you do get the game along with it. So that's pretty cool. Now there is another kit that's only ten dollars more, eighty dollars, and this one is actually kind of a little bit cooler in my mind because okay. it's actually a full on like robo suit kind of thing, literally. It's a backpack, cardboard That's again, awesome. I admit, and you, you, you tie things to your feet and your hands and so it knows where your feet and hands are, and you basically control a little robot in space. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So anyways, <laughs> there you go. So that's not the only thing Nintendo's bringing on. Um, it's looking like there is an adorable Pikachu 2DS XL coming on January 26th, so by the end of the month, reported ah. by Polygon. Ah. <laughs> ah. So there's actually, you can see an image, there's actually there's, a picture of the, there's, there's the, nothing the little about pokey this. face with the snout actually molded up out of the case so it adds an effect. Uh, not only uh, are they bringing the Detective Pikachu movie in 2018, but you're going to be getting this thing, which is pretty sweet. Um, let's see, the system already no, no, has... No, no, I'm, I'm, no. The, it was in Japan already, it's just coming out for the US and Canada, I guess. It's going to be $159 US. Let's talk about I, Duke. I don't really care, personally. I think it's cool, but I don't care. I'm not a Pikachu fan, so. Or a Pokemon fan, or what do you know? You know what I mean. Let's talk about Duke. Oh, yes. Okay. So, this I love. Okay. 
So any of you who had the original Xbox, they originally shipped with the Duke controller. So this is, uh, after many, many years, the iteration that, you know, through refinement, they've come down to this controller. The original was a Duke. It's a big, fat, beefy controller, and it got brought down to the S controller, and then now what you see here. So this Duke is actually being brought to light by a company, the name, oh, where is it? Sorry, Mad guys. Cats. No, wait. Uh, no, no. Hyperkin. <laughs> Hyperkin is bringing it. They're expected to sell for 70 US, which isn't cheap, actually. But uh, where the Duke had the little dome in the center and it had just had a printed Xbox logo, they're actually going to have an LCD. Oh, uh, OLED? Or, yeah, OLED screen, which uh, will show the logo as the system boots up. I don't know if they implement are going to implement more things showing up in there. It's kind of cool. Does Xbox even support that kind of capacity? Uh, see, that's the thing. I don't know the exact details and how it's going to work with it, but this is basically what they're saying it will have. So if you're an old and, schooler, and you remember love, these, then yeah, you want this. Yeah, that's me. I used to mod them. I used to pop them open and put a little light and run two leads to the vibrating motor. So when you'd shoot a gun in the game, the light would flash. It was really cool. Anyways. All right, then. Hey, guys, change, changing gears here. We're going to go ahead and pop over to the uh, the media world. Uh, LA man charged with involuntary, involuntary manslaughter over the cod swatting. This is kind of a follow-up from what we previously talked yes. about. So yes. this this is this is the dickhole who decided to swat somebody on a bet, and uh, ended up getting a, a Kansas City person killed as a result of it. So just just as a quick follow up to you guys, he is uh, being charged on involuntary manslaughter charges, and uh, the max sentence can carry up to thirty six months in jail, up to three hundred thousand dollar fine. Oh, so I'm I'm hoping the hell and back that he and the other guys as well. Um, who are wrangling this get nailed to the wall because I'm sorry, this, this swatting shit needs to stop. Seriously, yeah, guys, I agree, hundred percent. Don't. It, it, I'm gonna move on. It, it's it's a stupid move or a misuse of resources. Plus, in this case, lost a person's life. Stupid. Yeah. Also uh, stupid. So, <laughs> yeah. So this is actually really bad. Uh, Hawaii residents receive a false emergency no, alert. Incoming funny. missiles. It's funny, but it's at the same time. Like, it could have had some serious <laughs> crap going on, you know? Hawaiian residents received a false alert about incoming missiles to their phones and televisions. Uh, the message actually read as follows. Ballistic missile threat inbound to Hawaii. Seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. In all caps. All caps. Okay? So, the alert was called to be a false report pretty quickly after it came out by Congresswoman uh, Bullshit. Gabbard. <laughs> uh, and she assured that she checked with officials and there was no danger to the island. Uh, pretty US quickly? Pacific, pretty, pretty quickly. quickly. Well, yeah, so watch this. U.S. Pacific Command, uh, Command noted that the message was sent in error and it took more than 30 minutes for authorities to push out a correction. That's pretty quickly. They basically minutes. just said, hey, all you people in this tiny little island where you can't go anywhere... Um, grab your ankles and suck your dicks because you're going to kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> it's over now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically, he's the, the, the person in charge meant to hit the test system and a very similar option up higher was the real deal and the real deal went out, so. Damn. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> uh. Uh, switching gears again to other news, kind of gaming related, but I can put this in other news because the things that follow. Robot Cash. <laughs> this is an upcoming site that's gonna allow you, the player, to sell your used, used digital games, so you can buy new games. Oh wow, that's I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's great. Actually, this, here's a brilliant part too. Is yeah. um. You'll be able to sell your used digital games and, yeah. and purchase new games through them. They're kind of they're kind of like putting themselves in the same realm as like GOG and Steam in that gotcha. sense. And they are offering, unlike Steam and them, they're actually offering ninety percent of sales on new games to go back to the studios, as well as seventy percent of of used games to go back to the studios. Oh wow! Okay. And yeah, you know about cryptocurrency, right? Yeah. You're actually so, able to sell yeah. your games for cryptocurrency. Oh wait, okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I but don't know. I don't know. Cryptocurrency, what cryptocurrency is blowing up, man. It is all the rage. You, you've got Bitcoin. You've got uh, um, um, 
Oh, go. What's the other one? There's your fa- or fairy. Uh, yeah, 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 Ethereum. 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 That's it. Ethereum. So now you can sell your games for cryptocurrency. Oh, sorry. You can sell your games for iron cryptocurrency, which is mm. their own oh. private <laughs> cryptocurrency. I see. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting out of hand. I'm sorry. Okay, we're actually out of hand. How about how about this? Okay. Okay. Um, so we're talking about cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin yep. was briefly le- uh, uh, legal tender in KFC Canada. <laughs> this is reported by this is reported by Engadget. So KFC Canada is letting customers pay with Bitcoin for a limited time as long as they order a new crypto themed meal bucket. <laughs> the bucket, the, the damn bucket's called. Get this. The Bitcoin bucket, and it contains 10 tenders, waffle fries, a side of your choice, some gravy, and a pair of dips. Yeah, so the combo sells for an equivalent of $20 Canadian, works out, which works out to 0.001167 Bitcoin. That's because Bitcoin is, is so freaking awesome and so expensive and so worth the time to get into. It's Bitcoin licking good. <laughs> <laughs> Like, come on. <laughs> well, on the bright side, purchasing yeah. your uh, your chicken make it a little cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Bitcoin uh, may be hitting its uh, end of its prime. I'm not really sure. I'll be honest with you. The, the whole cryptocurrency th- scene, <sighs> it's, a, it's a funny world. If, if you don't know yeah. what cryptocurrency is, it, it is digital decentralized currency. No country owns it. Nobody is a centralized participant in it. It is literally coins that are mined by computers, chunking through equations, and when they get the equation right, they get rewarded with some with some virtual currency. Bitcoin shot through the roof. In December, it yeah, shot it up crazy. to its peak at just shy of twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand yeah, dollars US per Bitcoin. Per coin, yeah. Now in perspective, just what a year prior to that, it was maybe a hundred. So I mean, yeah. if you'd gotten a few Bitcoin, you would have made buku bucks. Now that said, as of this time of reporting, it's already back down to ten thousand. Yeah, so um, it's like yeah, it's a it, huge it, drop. Yeah, and and this goes right in line with our little conversation about Steam dropping support for Bitcoin because it's so volatile. Because it is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it it has kind of gone downhill. So if you're in the Bitcoin market or want to get into it, you may want to hold off on that or be very very careful at the very least. Guys, think of it this way: it is literally an unregulated stock market. Be Pretty careful, much. please. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Let's get wrap up our news for right now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, and and scatter this. Move on to the next one. <laughs> Okay, guys. Welcome back to another game releases with me, Kirok, for Bottle Rocket Gaming, guys. There's about uh, four or five games this time around. Starting to pick up steam in the new year. And your first game is coming out January 23rd, and it is called Lost Sphere. This is out for PC, PS4, and the Nintendo Switch. It is a role-playing game. A true JRPG at heart, brought to you by the same developers that made I Am Setsuna. If you love traditional JRPGs, then this is a must-have in your library. I can tell you, I have I Am Setsuna, and that has a high standard, and I expect no less from this title once it comes out. Even though it's coming out for the PC, and yes, the PlayStation 4, it is a JRPG that just screams to be on the Nintendo Switch. Also on January 23rd, we have Batman, The Enemy Within, Episode 4, What Ails You. This is coming out for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. It is an action-adventure game. And this is the next chapter in the Telltale Dark Knight saga, and it's almost upon us, guys. I've watched some streamers play this game, and this game is amazing. It's got an amazing storyline, uh, fantastic visuals, and it puts you in the driver's seat to make life and death choices. It is an amazing series, and if you dare call yourself a Batman fan, then you have no excuses. Play this 
game. And your next game coming out on January 25th is Celeste. This is coming out for PC, PS4, and the Switch. It's an action side-scrolling platform. Uh, basically, Celeste looks amazing. It's got that 8-bit style side-scrolling platformer thing going. The game looks intense and looks difficult. It's quite colorful and has some traces of a mix between, say, Terraria and Axiom Verge. Uh, and here I go again. I know it. It's coming out for PC. It's coming out for PS4. But guys, the Switch, this system, the little Nintendo Switch, is pulling some serious weight right now. On January 26th, we have Monster Hunter World. This is coming out for PS4 and Xbox One. It is an action RPG. This is the next iteration in the hugely popular Monster Hunter series. And I've always looked at this series and thought, hmm, let me take the plunge, let me jump in, but I never actually did. And this is finally the first game that's kind of compelling and is pushing me towards doing it. Um, the game is not an MMO, but does have the ability to have four of your buddies jump in and play with you and defeat the bosses that are there. Visually, the game is stunning. And it does remind me of like a long lost fantasy world. Maybe someday. And your last game on January 26th is Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Z. Fighter Z. Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Uh, for you Dragon Ball fans out there, lots of f flashing lights, lots of angry faces looking like they're about to take a shit. Lots of flying through the air at breakneck speeds with a fist outstretched in front of them and lots of heavily gelled hair. Enough said. And there you have it, guys. We completed another game releases. This week, we had some pretty cool games in there. So I hope next week you'll join in and watch the games that I bring you at that time. Thank you for joining me, guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it, and bye for now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the main topic. And tonight's topic, I'm going to finally refer to as what the fuck, YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I people, I in, in case you haven't somehow heard about this, YouTube's been having problems this past year with a lot of things. And I mean, yeah. a lot of things. Um, So to start us off here, um. I want to recap what's really kind of led up to what's been a big deal with YouTube lately. And to be fair, I'm going to try to be as neutral as I can about this to start mm -hmm. with. But I mean, even I'm getting tainted by this. Even, even though I'm not even affected by a lot of what's going on yet, it's still a, a very bothersome thing. So first of all, let's go ahead and recap the follies of YouTube over this past year. So way back, if you can remember, there was there was a, the the mysterious unsubbing thing that happened. Yep, people I were just mysteriously getting unsubbed, and they were actually people like noting in comments, "I didn't unsub from you. What the hell is going on here?" They had the issue with uh, they started promoting the bell icon because for some reason people weren't getting notification updates even if they were subbed. Yep. So people they wouldn't know there. somebody put a new video out. Yeah. Exactly. So that was yep. causing problems. So there's the, the whole back-end issue. Something's going on with YouTube. Things aren't working very well. And then on top of that, then you have stupid shit happen. Like um, the whole... I'm not really sure which order this happened in, but there was the Adpocalypse yeah. where a whole bunch of advertisers pulled out in fear uh, of uh, retribution from from their, you know, their followers, if you will, uh, because of their ads being rolled against questionable content that they didn't necessarily mm -hmm. want to promote. Now, back when we talked about this, I even stated, like, I, I understand where they're coming from. I totally get it. And I and I, 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 I don't fault them per se. But in this day and age, I think it behooves us to understand that just because you see an ad in front of a show doesn't mean they're endorsing that show. That's right. We all know this is an automated system, and it's it's just pairing things up. There's, there's no intention behind it. Coca-Cola has no idea that that was an ISIS video, okay? You know, that kind of a thing. But nonetheless, it happened. And then on top of that, then you get key figures like PewDiePie, who does stupid shit like pay somebody five bucks, go hold up a sign that basically says, fuck off all Jews. Um, uh, yeah. It's not not cool, yeah. No, it really isn't. And then, and then you add to that more rumblings and issues and whatnots. You have YouTube that, in reaction to a bunch of people pulling out for advertising, goes off the fucking 
deep end when it comes to ratcheting down on videos. So anything that's that, that's in, that basically any way negative at yeah. all gets yeah. knocked off of monetization. So it could could be a word in the title or a one a word, word said. Yeah, like, and it may not have any context to anything yeah. negative. Or perceived violence. Even video game violence. Everybody who has made their channel on playing COD or yeah. anything like that Shooting games. Yeah. is S-O-fucking-L. Yeah. You know, I have to do just, a bunch of my hand grenade and horseshoes. It's seriously, it is a, yeah. it's a, it is a, it is a shooting range simulation Sim, game. Simulator, For right. the love of Christ. So you have yeah. all that. And then just to stick feet you know, firmly both feet into it at the same time, PewDiePie opens his mouth and mm. decides to throw the N-word out there <laughs> yeah. because he's mad at somebody because he had to shoot him too many times. Again, one of the top, if not the biggest person on YouTube, opens his fucking mouth and uses that kind of shit. It's like, really, dude? Not helping the situation here for any of us, you know? So that happens. And then we move on further, and we have issues like, again, just ongoing back and forth about demonetizing videos and how long it takes them to respond to get views back up. And even if you're even worthy of being attended to, if you put in, say, hey, my video should not have been demonetized, well, do you have enough people viewing yeah, it? Are viewing you popular exactly. enough for us to even worry about it? Yeah. Not so much. Add to that, on a side note, YouTube kids getting a whole bunch of content streamed to our young children mm -hmm. that's highly inappropriate because the algorithm fucked up again. And just just to put a little smearing of, of stupidity on top of all that, we have the Logan Paul issue that happened recently. Oh, yeah. <sighs> you know, it's, it's young, stupid people being stupid and young. And I can, I can, I can get that. I can understand that to a certain extent. But that said, YouTube didn't really do much to the. Well, we're going to move them from our preferred partners thing. We're going to do this. But they didn't really do anything else beyond that. So YouTube has taken a very soft hand towards it. And, and apparently it took a while for them to take that video down, too, it, that he posted. It absolutely did. Yeah. On top of all of that, you have the ongoing issue with YouTube's automated copyright system, which has been a bane for multiple years now. It has made YouTube an incredibly, incredibly unforgiving and, and, and brutal environment for anybody who's actually trying to make a, a make their way monetarily. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to take a little uh, like over from here. That so, so the next part of it we want to get into is the recent changes. Mm -hmm. What literally just happened four days ago. Uh, so YouTube implemented stricter requirements for partners. Yep. And there was a bunch of articles of this online. The one I'm referring to is the one by Engadget. And essentially, um, they uh, decided to change the YouTube partner program, or YPP for short, and the changes were effective immediately. And so it, it almost looks like this comes off the tail end of the Logan Paul incident, but I got a feeling, as you've mentioned and kind of kindly gone through everything that's been happening, mm -hmm. I think that Logan Paul incident was just the straw that broke the camel's back. It was an accumulation of everything before it. And then they were like, okay, we have to do something. This is what we're doing. Oh, I'll, so, I'll, I'll even go further than that and say that Logan Paul was inevitability, but it was even after the fact. They've already made the call. This mm -hmm. was this was gonna happen whether Logan Paul fucked up or did not. his thing or not. It was yeah. just it was just the right time to do it because now it looks like they're doing something about it. Um, you, 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 I, you without glasses, <laughs> such a foreign thing to me. It looked weird for now. I'm like, uh, <laughs> so so there are going to be a ton of of smaller YouTube channels that are going to be affected by this. Some of them who are actually and and I'm one of those, but see. Keep in mind, it, it will affect those, I think, that are really shooting hard to make this their, uh, to, to try and make it on YouTube, to make it okay. their primary income or something Hold like on. that. Hold on, back up. Yeah. What yeah. happened to you? So here's what happened. Uh, I just get an email out of the blue from YouTube, and I'm going to read a segment of that email, the meat of that email, uh, and what changes they're making uh, and how they're making monetization or the ability to make income off their platform more, more strict. So I'll read it here and I quote, 
Under the new eligibility requirement announced today, your YouTube partner, partner channel, Kira Crafts, that's me, uh, is no longer eligible for monetization because it doesn't meet the new threshold of 4,000 hours of watch time in the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. Um, as a result, your channel will lose access to all monetization tools and features associated with the YouTube Partner Program on February 20, 2018, unless you surpass this threshold in the next 30 days. According to this, e oh, sorry, accordingly, this email serves as a 30-day notice that your YouTube Partner Program terms are terminated. That's it. That's the part I wanted to read. So basically, I can't monetize any videos anymore. Was I monetizing videos? Yeah, I was. Was I making a ton of money? Was it making a difference in my life? Was it an income stream that if I lost, I would be sad about? Yes. No. For me, yes, for me absolutely. It was. Absolutely. <laughs> Guys, folks, but it'll here's, add, here's the big thing. There. Here's okay, the go big ahead. thing. We need your support. You need to dump as much money on us as possible to support Kirok now that he has lost monetization no, for YouTube. He is going to starve out in the cold <laughs> and get eaten by polar bears, polar bears if you yes, do not yes. support him. No. Uh, after the polar here's, bears have their fill come here's up, the here thing. Come the <laughs> Even for the outline that they're saying, for the minimal amount of hours viewed and amount of, sub of subscribers, even if you did breach that threshold so you could be monetized, it's only a few hundred dollars, like, yeah. annually kind of thing. I mean, it really right. is not much. No. So, yeah, even for the people of doubt, anybody who got cut off at that threshold, Kirok included, yeah. is it, it, it wasn't breaking their bank. Yeah. So, and keep in mind, uh, other websites that are actually being able to support themselves through what they do, mm -hmm. such as um, a lot of the, the gamers out there, such mm -hmm. as, you know what, good... Uh, Who's the other guy that you like too as well? Uh, Etho. Jenny B. Yep, Etho. Eric B. Etho. Yeah. So so there's a bunch of them that this is not going to affect them. But I think they're implementing this in a way to try and cut out the fluff. People who uh, make a channel, copy other channels, uh, illegally copy their content such as videos, TV shows, movies, yep. and then make money off it because there's millions of people who watch it. Do you get what I'm saying? But those are the ones that are actually going to break that threshold. They're, they're going to break that threshold. So that's where the, <laughs> the catch lies. You see, you just hit it, a nail on the head. But um, I, I do want to point out something else. Uh, like literally two days after this came out. Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold up. Okay. I just, I, 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 I totally, I know where you're going with this and I want to okay. hear this. But yeah, I, I have to point out, there is a logical reason for this format change. And that is obviously trying to manage and follow up on this many small oh, accounts yeah. is impossible. No matter yeah. how good their algorithm is, it can't do it. And they can't hire enough people in the world to They're manage all these accounts. To, but, but, to the, but it's impossible. The, the yeah, fact is, there would be no way. There are ridiculous about we, we measure how much video <laughs> is uploaded to YouTube by the hour Jigas in terms of days yeah. worth of content every hour put into you know youtube it it's cannot impossible. be managed so yeah making this cut line somewhere is a way to drop a huge amount of stuff they don't have to worry about checking for monetization before they apply advertisement to them yeah and they have to set a line to say, hey, listen, we, we can physically support and manage. Have people physically look at these channels to approve and and, and curate them at a certain level. And they, they probably looked at their entire list of people and went, we're going to cut the line here. We can manage this many of the upper tier and, and call it good. So there is some logic to that. And I, and I do get it. I do get yeah, this. Yeah, that this, makes sense. This is actually a reasonable, logical means for youtube to, to get some manner of control for this so yeah. to that end though and, and keep keep in mind too like it doesn't mean that someone who wants to make things work can't put the effort in and achieve those numbers that they put they're not impossible numbers right as well, long as you do what you want to like do do your due diligence and, and the, stick the to other it thing too to keep in mind is yeah it, it does mean you're getting a little bit less income direct from youtube trying to build up but that isn't that much money mm -hmm. agreed and we do have what i would consider now 
here in 2018, a reasonable means for alternative income. That's like your, that's your cue. Yeah, that's like that's like your, that, that, that's your cue, <laughs> Kirok. So uh, uh, some of these alternative or reasonable means of alternative income uh, are one of them. Everyone knows about it. It's Patreon. Mm -hmm. So and they uh, care. Yeah, and so uh, as you, many of you who are watching the show may know, I'm part of uh, Hop or uh, Hop Along Games, and uh, we uh, have a Patreon account that we set up a while ago, and we got an email from Patreon, and I want to read to you the email, the, the, the important part of it, and then the, the things that they suggest. So uh, so you can see so, – so here it is. Uh, I, hi, video creators. It's been a tough week for the video creator community and we want to help as much as we can. While, hope, while we hope Patreon is providing you with a sustainable income source, we know that many video creators juggle multiple revenue streams that may have taken a hit recently. Um, <clears throat> below, we've surfaced some resources and tips that we hope uh, help you strengthen your income streams. So they gave links to articles that are how-tos on on such things as nine ways to make money on YouTube without ads. Another one is eight ideas for YouTubers to monetize on Patreon. Another one is uh, how to reach your first 1,000 subscribers. Uh, and then it so goes it goes on for a few you. more. Yeah. So so, but it's interesting how one reaction or one act um, change in YouTube and one act caused a reaction in the in the community, and then how another uh, company out there in this case patreon who has is a separate revenue stream where you can use it to mm -hmm. to make money off your content if you're a content creator kind of took what they saw happening and put out uh, you know uh, an email to help people um yeah. it's i don't know if they're doing it entirely because they really do want to help or if they're doing it to make yeah, themselves yeah, I look do, good i think they do but I, that's I, I, yeah i I, 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 I haven't talked to them directly obviously i don't have the the no, red bat no. phone to them but the fact that they, I, I, I feel like when they had the little Patreon debacle with the changing the way the revenue stream would work, yeah. what was honestly intended to help the, the creators out, and they did listen to the community, and they did roll back from the pending changes mm -hmm. to back to the old way and said, we'll try to find a better way to do this. So I do think that, like any other business, they have to make a profit. But I do yes. think they are actually there for the community. And, and to be fair, Patreon was spawned as a result of, quite frankly, the lackluster income you get from YouTube unless you are really, really, really big. Yeah. The, the, the threshold to actually make solely YouTube advertisement your main means it, it is, is a high threshold to meet. And I have said way back in the early days in conversation with people that putting all your eggs in one basket is a piss poor idea talking about going with just youtube spread out yourself diversify. as much as yeah diversify uh do you know boogie 2988 yep yeah so he actually put a video out about this after this happened and he goes he put out points and tips and he was like diversify see if you have uh sponsors uh you know promote products if, if you can if, if and that that's works out yeah so and so, that's another way and that's a way to make money in addition, and all this stuff laps. You can you can have yeah. if you do it right. You're not yeah. obnoxious about it. You can have a show on YouTube that YouTube will roll ads against to give you some of the revenue. And in your show, you can advertise and get revenue that way, and ask for donation through Patreon. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, it's triple dipping in a way, but it's okay. You know, we 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 as followers and and consumers of content do understand. So, to that end, um. I I agree with 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 Patreon that you know here here's ways to do that. I agree with the whole you know diversifying aspects, and here's the other thing is that because of where YouTube is right now, and quite frankly the major clusterfuck that's going on, so much so that even their parent company Google has said, hey, uh, we're gonna step in and help out. Now, how much they're actually gonna do about that, I really question. Mm. But nonetheless, um, this has really opened up a pretty <laughs> pretty wide fucking door for anybody else to step in. And to that end, who could possibly step in? Well, you know, it depends on what you have the money for. Now, to be yeah. to be fair, first of all, yeah, there's other other YouTube s type services like uh, the Vimeo, uh, Vimeo, Vimeo, Vimeo. There's uh, 
etc. The problem is, is that they you, me, or see me, or I can't remember. They the don't one. have the chops. They don't have the infrastructure. They don't have the budget. And to be quite frank and honest with you, and, th and this is going strictly in into speculatory realms. Yeah. Is YouTube actually a profitable branch? Mm. I don't know. I th They've talked about how much revenue they pulled in from advertisement and paid out to people. But what's the cost of gulping up days, hours worth of video content every second? And viewing it and, sh and shipping it out. I mean, video is the most internet consuming <laughs> element. Yeah. It clogs is. those tubes. It clogs those, it clogs those, it clogs, it clogs <laughs> the pipes. <laughs> it, it does take a lot, of, a lot of effort to do that. So you have to look to the, to the bigger companies that would have the monetary capacity. Things like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, um, Disney. And you have to mm -hmm. figure out which of those would actually have an interest in it. It's not really Apple's realm, right? They're, they're they're in a different different kind of place. Same with Disney. They do video content, just not that kind of video content, sort of. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Microsoft, I use Microsoft. I like Microsoft, but God help us if they ever try to get into this realm because they would fuck it up royally. They they, they just <laughs> they just would. I'm sorry, they would. Amazon, however, Amazon, they own Twitch. Yeah. They own Twitch, yeah. and on top of that, Twitch just announced that they are going to be doing a couple of new features within their realm, which is going to be a, a basically a video producer tools. Now, the video producer tools have two main elements to them. The first one okay. is um, features that are basically what they call premieres, which enables broadcasters to create uh, landing pages and pre-record videos as well as a countdown timer and so on to let viewers know when uh, the show is going to be starting. So this is a refinement and kind of adding natively into Twitch what people have been using bots and outside services to do up to this point. Gotcha. On top of that, they're also going to have reruns. Now, reruns are basically a way to schedule shows um, of prior broadcasts. So people will get updates saying, "Hey, we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, broadcasting this prior show on a rerun at this time." Now the difference between this and the archive of past videos is yeah. this will be broadcast at a particular time, so everybody can come together and have live chat oh. during the rerun. That's actually pretty sweet. Yeah. Like so that, it, that... It, again, because Twitch Twit, Twit is always really <laughs> Twitch has always Twit, been really Twitch. about combining. Yeah, the creator and the followers together so have a community. community. Yeah, so yeah. and that's a really big thing. So this actually works really well, but this also sets them up for delving a little bit deeper into archive or recorded video as opposed to live video. And Amazon has the deep pockets, yeah, and they, they have the servers. Hell, they run yeah. server farms for people. Yeah. They they could pull this off. So now you've got somebody who, quite frankly, can start eating YouTube's lunch. And this also on top of the fact that you have to remember that Twitch in the last year opened up Twitch to go beyond gaming. So now you can go to Twitch and have a Crochet Corner podcast. Yep, or you, you can, can have a How to Fix a Car show. Things like that. So now all of a sudden they're able to start gulping in a lot more of that type of content. And yes, it's always been live content. It's been a little bit of apples and oranges ish. Now it's 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 more like, you know, cuties and oranges. Not quite <laughs> the same thing, but pretty damn close, you know? On top of all that, here's here's the real stinger. Twitch has actually struck a deal with Disney's Creative Studio, and this is sorry, Disney's Digital Network, which are the, the people who uh, gulp, basically the, the segment of Disney that gulped up uh, Maker Studio. Mm, now this okay. this 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 is, the, this is the studio that PewDiePie got dropped from when he yeah. decided to be an ass twice. Um, this is a big deal, specifically because in this deal, they're actually going to be pushing four of their top content creators from the Maker Studio world over to Twitch. And that's going to be uh, Jacksep Jacksepticeye. Uh, uh, i heard that name. Lo yeah, I have too. Lo losing Games, uh, Markiplier, and Strawber uh, Stra Stra Strawberry, Strawberry 17. Sorry, okay. I'm not familiar with a lot of these people. I've, I've only seen 
little bits and pieces of some of these people. So I'm not, I'm not personally involved with them, so I don't care in that regard. But their content that they're going to be producing for Twitch is going to be exclusive to Twitch. It's not going to get rebroadcast over to YouTube. This is these top tier people on YouTube who have literally millions, millions of followers on YouTube who are now going to be putting time and effort into creating content solely for Twitch. Gotcha. That's actually a big deal. Yeah. It is a big deal. And this is this is where things get really interesting because when you start doing deals like this, this is where you start to see the transition. First, you saw some of the content creators pushing over to create content yeah. over here. Now yeah. you're seeing the following getting pushed over because at this point, it's not the little people going, well, I can't make my way anymore because YouTube is dicking me. Now you've got big names specifically going over to make yeah. content that won't be coming exclusively over. too. So that, yeah. that'll draw the eyeballs across. Yeah. So there you go. Now we've got a situation where you've got a big name video related system that is stepping in and actually taking content away from YouTube because these people aren't going to go and do double duty and produce twice as much content so they can have content on YouTube and on Twitch. They're going to split their time. They're going to go ahead and put part of the time into Twitch, part of the time into YouTube, which means less time for YouTube. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to keep up with it, anybody who's in love with Jacksepticeye is going to have to go ahead and move on over and watch him on Twitch. Yeah. See him live broadcast. See the reruns when they can. Watch the archive videos when they want to. And that means less eyeballs on YouTube, and that means less ad revenue. Yep. Bum, bum, bum. So where YouTube seemingly has been hostile to its content creators, Twitch has been very, very cordial. They've implemented the... the um, They've flourished. Oh, yeah, they really have. They, they, they've implemented a lot of new tools. Not only yeah, functional the tools affiliate like affiliate program. The affiliate program so that people can actually get money. I can actually give Kirok money through that process. Yeah. In addition to the fact that he can do advertisement through Twitch, in addition to the fact that he has a Patreon account, there's all this stuff they could do. And again, this is not this is not a situation where everybody's going to drop YouTube and go over to Twitch and be solely on Twitch. Again, diversification. Have a Patreon account. Find people to advertise on your show. We would love to on the podcast. We would love to have yeah. people advertise with. If Gunner Glasses or anybody else wants to advertise on our show, I will gladly talk to them. And the only reason for it is, is we want to be able to bring in a little extra cash to the BRG group and help them out so we can do more events, <laughs> more giveaways, stuff that gives to the community. We want to take that, try to find a way to channel cash from there to there. We're, again, we're, we love doing this, guys. We really do. We love doing this show. And there may be a point where we switch over to Twitch and do the show over there. I don't know. But as of right now, it's worth noting and reminding people – YouTube is a free platform to upload video for anyone to watch. That is a really, really, really hard thing to fathom unless you're as old as we are and we actually remember what it was like before YouTube. Finding mm -hmm. videos was a hard thing to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trying to host videos somewhere really kind of meant you had to spool up a server in your house and literally – Oh, have that dude. server running and have an internet connection that you wouldn't get screwed on if you went over your cap. There, there, there were websites that they got too popular. If they had even a popular blog post, yeah, that was too popular, their site would get shut down because the internet provider would say, "Hey, you've hit your cap. We're not doing your website out anymore." Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, YouTube does have a, a, a really useful utility to it, and. I'll be honest with you, from my vantage point, this makes me worry. It makes me worry because for people like myself who aren't getting hit by this too hard as of yet, we haven't had a lot of interaction or issues with YouTube other than a few frivolous uh, DMCA notices that basically say, hey, we're going to monetize your video because you have – you know, a, a five second clip of a post stamp of Mario. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> other than that, we haven't been affected by it. But to, to lose a content provider like this would be very, very difficult. What's to say that YouTube is going to go, hey, we're going to cut all these people out at this level. If you're not making this kind of video, screw off. 
at some point saying, well, you know what? You're a leech. You're producing video. You're hosting video on our servers. You're making us pay the bill to distribute this video. It's costing us money, and we're just going to go ahead and cut it right there and be done with it. Where does this podcast go? You know? I guess over the Twitch. I guess we learned how to, to reformat this, <laughs> this show and do it live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, we, could do it. we could do it. I'm sure we could do it. Anyways, guys. That it's is, a big topic. Yeah, it's a, it's a big topic, and I'm sure we're gonna have to revisit this again because shit's gonna hit the fan. We're starting to see the 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 wind shift. We're starting to see the. And this is, mark my words, just the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Just the beginning. So a lot of <laughs> things are gonna happen probably in this next year. Honestly, I, I bet you by the time we get to the year in review episode, the end of this year, there's gonna be some topics to be had about YouTube, uh, on top of what we've already seen. Yeah. So, anyways, I do want to get your thoughts and opinions, so please make sure you comment down below. Give us your thoughts on how YouTube has acted and what the steps of truth Twitch is taking regarding uh, kind of opening up. It seems like kind of taking in things. If you have any thoughts or opinions on it, I'd love to know. So, please, 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 please let us know. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and uh, get moving on. Okay, guys, we are at the end of another wonderful evening of the BoyRG podcast, and I do appreciate you joining us for a wonderful topic. I I really enjoyed getting a chance to talk about the whole YouTube thing. I we, we didn't we we got the chance to talk about a lot of stuff, but there's things we missed. Things like Amazon trademarking, kind of like Amazon tube type names, or the mm. fact that Amazon did have a premiere program for uh, content creators a while back that I've heard anything more about. I mean, there's a lot more there to it. Again, it, there's going to be more stuff going on. But again, we've got to wrap this up. So to that end, one of the content creators I do want to talk about is good old Kirok. <laughs> oh, me? Hi. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> so, Kirok, as, as people know, you've got a YouTube channel. And again, it, it is I active. Do. It is doing stuff. you got things on there. Yeah, I have uh, Mafia stuff going on there uh, as as I stream that game, but I haven't gotten back to streaming it, so I need to I need to do that. Yeah, you do need to do that because uh, uh, I've, I've been having fun streaming other games. So I I'm currently streaming Firewatch, but, also Animal but, Crossing but, but on the game too. On the YouTube too. Yeah, no, it's I I'm gonna just do my Mafia, and then once that's done, I'll pick another game and I'll do that and so on. So. Well, hey. if you guys want to see that content, make sure you go over to his Twitch channel and check yes. him out there. And again, just cure out craft over on Twitch. You'll be able to find him there. He is a member of the wonderful Project Singularity crew. We know you know most of them. You love them. If you don't, go over there and check them out. Go to the members page. You can you can find all their YouTube channels and or Twitch channels listed right there for easy click access. Yeah, so definitely encourage you guys to do that. And of course, even more exciting. Yeah. Hop along games. Hop along games. Hop along games. Yeah, yeah. You've got some good content going. I've really been enjoying it, by the way. You, yeah. Okay, and you've got 25 you. subs. Uh, yeah. We recently got up to 25. And uh, basically, the last episode that went up, we upped our game. So we did like a 4K recording. Uh, yeah. Got some nice, nice new mics. mics. You guys look good. You're not on yeah. a couch anymore, unfortunately. No, but it's still good. It's a lot of fun because we have a green screen. So yeah, I know, but it's not the same. It's, it's, it's gonna be couch cope. You guys look more comfy on the couch. Just, just my two bits. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, guys, make sure you head over to Hop Along Games on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, look up Hop Along Games, and you'll uh, you'll find them. And uh, make sure you give them a, uh, check them out. If you like what you see there, make sure you give them a, a little bit of love with the like button. Make sure you give them a sub because they deserve it. It, it is really entertaining. And they do take uh, requests, if you will. You guys can throw your, your questions into, yeah. uh, in, into the barf bucket, and uh, they will be more <laughs> than happy to uh, pull them out of there and uh, wipe them off and uh, check them out. And answer them for you. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go over there and check it out. You'll know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, on the other side of things, there is the Ball Rocket Gaming community. That is what we are a part of. The Ball Rocket Gaming community is a wonderfully large in spirit community, so to speak. The podcast is just a small segment of it. We've got a lot of wonderful, brilliant people. Everything from content creators to just people who want to play games and have a good time doing it. I definitely encourage you to head over to BotRocketGaming.com. Check out things there. The website, more or less, now is just down to using it for the events page. We do have plans to redo the website at some point because it has kind of lost its value in terms of being a place to communicate because we do it on our Discord 
Discord channel now. So you can also find us over on the Discord channel. Again, the link will be in the show notes. So you can easily click on that and find our Discord channel or go to the Discord finder and just look up Ball Rocket Gaming and you'll find us. And of course, we do have a YouTube channel as long as it lasts the way things are going. Uh, <laughs> definitely make sure you guys head over there and check it out. Hell, if you're watching this, you are there. If you enjoy what you see here, please feel free to hit a like, leave a comment, sub to the channel. We're trying to break that 100 mark. I know it's a far stretch from where we're at now, but I really want to hit that mark this year. So that, can, that's our goal. Our hope is this year we're going to break 100 break because 100. by golly, we're going to do it. Um, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it too. Cause I got plans for a lot of, uh, a lot more fun stuff, giveaways, guests, and so on. So look forward to that. If you're into the new fangled Twitch thing, then make sure you head over to twitch.com. Sorry, twitch.tv slash bottle rocket gaming. Cause we mm -hmm. do have a channel there. We do do a lot of live content. We actually have multiple people who stream to the bottle rocket, uh, Twitch stream, as well as we host other people when they're streaming. So for example, when Kirok is on, we'll host him. So you guys could always have something good to watch when you want to. So definitely make sure you check that out. And last but not least, of course, is our wonderful Patreon account. We do have a Patreon service. So if you guys want to pitch a few dollars our way, we really appreciate it. It really does help out. It's a few dollars, and it helps us do a lot of events and whatnot. So thank you very much in advance for the wonderful people who can do that and will do that in the future. So you guys are awesome, and we appreciate it. So thank you helps a lot yeah <laughs> it really does all right guys thank you so very much we do appreciate tonight kirok thank you so much for joining me yet again you're welcome it was it's, a lot of fun today this it, was great because this was just a regular episode regular show we can actually oh, talk about man. what we want to talk about it's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right guys we're gonna say good night so hey kirok say good night yeah good night good night <laughs> see ya take it easy bye <laughs> bye